We're in bigger trouble than most people actually want to think about. We've got an economic system that no longer works well enough for everybody. Many people ask, how does my child have a better life than I do in the developed world? And can't <clears throat> neither they can't come up with an answer, nor can the political and technocratic elites that make the decisions. They don't have an answer either. So the economy. We have evaporating consent for democracy, for the rule of law, and for the concept of universal human rights. A third crisis, again, not well enough understood, but there, is what I call the crisis of algorithmic control. Elites and states are increasingly able to use the vast asymmetries of power and information between them and us to not only know our thoughts and behaviours, as you will know if you use Google or Facebook or Amazon, but increasingly to predict them and therefore to control them. And this triple crisis of economic stasis, of falling consent for the old institutions and for rising use of algorithmic and machine control of human beings constitutes to me a whole, a big thing that we can link together. Starting in 2008 with the Lehman Brothers crisis, morphing into the 2011 uprisings from Egypt to Spain to Greece, Occupy Wall Street, and now the attack on truth and the war on truth. I came to the conclusion that the crisis of the neoliberal system has resulted in a crisis of the neoliberal self. Neoliberalism, for me, is the coercive introduction by the state of market norms of behaviour into all parts of everyday life. Michel Foucault, writing at the dawn of the neoliberal era, warned us what we would become, uh, entrepreneurs of the self. As the neoliberal system embedded itself into our lives, we increasingly conformed and performed into this kabuki theatre style of interaction. We became two-dimensional, in the literal sense of homo economicus. For Mill and co, and homo economicus was a thought experiment. What if people only judged everything in terms of market interactions? But the selves we built to cope with the violent introduction of neoliberalism were selves that actually did, non-metaphorically, interact in this way. A great example of that would be, suppose that someone in your town you know, decides that they want to build a new library. You know, from the local newspaper to the librarian to the, 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 the local councillor, the question would be, is it good for the economy of Swindon or whatever? We learned not to ask the question, is it, is it good just because we want to read more books? It's, it's almost become a knee jerk that we, that we reduce everything to the homo economicus uh, form of, of questioning. But the problem here became that the outcome would be that we became eminently governable. Who has agency in that photograph? Everybody's just taking photos of him. There's one person with agency in that photograph. Hannah Arendt called this the temporary alliance of the elite and the mob. And that's what we're seeing all over the world. What the elite wants can be summed up by one word, chaos. Chaos from which they prosper. If you are Renaissance Technologies, Robert Mercer, Trump's biggest backer, uh, to the tune of, uh, of, of millions. Renaissance Technologies has a machine that understands the world better than anybody else does. It's, it's a neuro-linguistically programmed artificial intelligence, and it can trade volatility better than anybody else. Ergo, the more volatility there is, the better. Steve Bannon owned Breitbart. Breitbart trades on fear and chaos. That's what it reports. All rapes in Sweden are migrant rapes for, for, for Breitbart. Um, the more the better for business. And for the Coke industries, uh, they didn't back Trump, but they backed the Republicans in the last election. Again, you could say, what, what, if you are an avowed anarcho-capitalist who believes the government should literally not exist, and that the survival of the fittest should literally govern everybody's lives, then again, what you want is chaos. And this guy, Trump, is just the wrecking ball. He is the chaos engine. But what do the mob want? What do the people holding up those, those, those uh, chanting the C word at, at Hillary Clinton and the rest. What do they want? Well, it, what they, when you interview them, what they want is white supremacy, misogyny, homophobia, climate denial, anti-vaccination. Anti that's, that's their meat and drink of their ideology. But Arendt, in the full quote, says something I think we should learn from. She says about the Nazis, what the mob wanted and what Goebbels gave them was access to history even at the price of destruction. It's a, a, a pregnant phrase. They want the reversal of history. 
The man I interviewed on the Trump um, inauguration, who could not accept climate change, could not accept it because he was a, a cattle farmer from Tennessee. He says, if climate change is right, I have to give up my, I have to pay a tax. And if I have to pay a tax, my children don't get my wealth at the end. So climate change can't be right. And haven't you heard about the uh, camel uh, skeleton that has been recently found under the Antarctic? We are asked to be sympathetic to such people, to worry about the bleak lives that they live in flyover country in America and about their supposed poverty. But... There's enough evidence drawn from surveys that it's not poverty or bleakness uh, on its own that is driving people in this direction. It is the desire to reverse history, just as Arendt predicted. But what makes it possible for them to win? As I say, the important thing about this picture is that we are looking at, at, a, at a state where only elites have agency. This is not an aberration from the neoliberal era. Trump himself is merely a national neoliberal. He is, uh, it, this is Thatcherism in one country. Because of the crisis of the global economy, it's become necessary for the el elites to compete with each other using deregulation rather than to cooperate with each other using de deregulation. That's what Trumpism, Bolsonaro, Orban, Brexit, to me, is. <clears throat> but what they are required to play on is a thing that neoliberalism itself created, a folk religion of fatalism. <laughs>